Greetings, it is I, the Great One Himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. On the interwebs, dropping some CLSology. Here you bleh, bleh, bleh. dropping some CLS Oller. Okay, take three. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of the post processing and editing here at the Cynical Libertarian Society. Wait, what the fuck is this? Dropping some CLSology on your bitch asses. Hold on. So, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice official teaser trailer to the Ben Affleck movie. Really? Okay, is this for real or is this bullshit? Because you never, you see things on YouTube and you never know like if it's a parody or if it's real. Is there really a Batman versus Superman movie coming out? Ooh, false god spray painted on the Superman statue. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I know. I know you just, I'm not just, you should be happy I'm not talking. Is this really, is this real? Is this a real movie? Batman versus Superman? Okay, Ben Affleck, I, I have no fucking interest in Ben Affleck, but seriously, is there really going to be a Batman versus Superman movie? Dude. Just for the record. Okay, just for the record, Batman is the shit. See, here's the problem. This has nothing to do with even what I came here to talk about. So I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the computer. This just I saw this on the YouTube. I was going to start off by saying, why is it when I'm on YouTube, all I see, because you know if you go to YouTube and you're not, or like you sign out and it kicks you over to that screen where it shows you all these videos, and all I ever see is Taylor Swift videos. Like Taylor Swift is all fucking over the recommended videos. And so I was going to start off by talking about how can Taylor Swift have this many fucking videos? Which, by the way, I think I've mentioned this before. If I haven't mentioned it before, I'll mention it now. Because I'll try anything. This, <laughs> oh, I'll try anything. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> That's what I said too. I'll try anything. I got some Taylor Swift CDs. I know old people listen to CDs. And I was your age. We, you know, all you kids are like, what the fuck is a CD? I just get shit off iTunes. <laughs> I got some Taylor Swift CDs from the library to listen to it. Cause I mean, she's not like super, super hot, but she's fuckable. I mean, if I, there was nothing good on TV, there's always something good on TV. Cause I have all three seasons of the original Star Trek on DVD. Which I just today was watching Galileo 7, one of the best original Star Trek episodes in my opinion. Because I'm, I'm going through some, some bullshit in my life right now dealing with some statism. And whenever, and I, I'm, and this, this kind of ties in. I'm, I'm a little bit... I don't know if I want to say depressed. It's just like right now I kind of feel the weight of the world upon me. You know, there's some things going on. It's like, oh, God damn it. I got to deal with this shit. I'm not going to lie. It's got me a little bit down. And so when I feel as if things in my life are spiraling out of control, I often turn to the original Star Trek. Because Captain Kirk, despite William Shatner's acting skills, Spock, where's my ship? 
Despite William Shatner and his, some of his over-the-top shitness, original Star Trek was, for reasons I've talked about multiple times in the past, the original Star Trek TV series was a step forward, I think, for our society. And I mean that, I mean that sincerely. I mean, Star Trek came at a time when, and you can make a lot of arguments, you know, there, again, star, the original Star Trek had shit tons of flaws to it. Lots and lots of flaws to it. But it came at a time when our society needed to see humans doing great things together. And, you know, people, and again, I've made this argument myself. I mean, the supporting characters, you know, unlike later Star Trek shows that came along, and TV shows nowadays are much more ensemble-based. You know, at the time, you know, Uhura, Uhura just got to say, oh, a hailing frequency's open, and Sulu just kind of sat there and, it doesn't work, Captain! We're re-, you know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, yes, the characters, all the supporting characters, there, there could have been so much more greatness in the original Star Trek series. It had the writing been better and you know all this other stuff. There was so much opportunity, but the point is the original Star Trek I think did some great stuff. And as I've talked about this a gazillion times, why Captain Kirk is greater than Captain Picard. You have talked about this a gazillion times. Captain Kirk understood that rules exist to serve people. That's why Kirk violates the Prime Directive like a motherfucker. When Spock says, but Captain, we cannot violate the Prime Directive. And Kirk said in the one episode, yes, but that only applies to civilizations that are developing normally. This cell of civilization is stagnant, and so fuck it. Or like when they showed up on the planet, I talk about this all the time, they showed up on that planet where they were fighting the wars via computers, and the computers like, this many people died. And then people would go get in the disintegration chambers because the computer said they were supposed to be dead. Kirk's like, no, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I am motherfucking Captain James Tiberius Kirk, and I am here to lay the smacketh motherfucking down on you and your motherfucking computers. Okay, so Captain Kirk is the motherfucker. End of discussion. Greatest motherfucking Starfleet captain ever. Captain James T. motherfucking Kirk. Suck a dick. All right, Galileo 7. Great episode. That's me having a beer. Anyhow, Taylor Swift all over my fucking YouTube. So I'm looking at the YouTube there as I'm turning this on, and I saw the motherfucking Batman versus Superman. Batman is the motherfucker. Batman is like the Captain James T. Kirk of superheroes. I like superhero comics in general. I've read, I read all of the Gen 13. I like Gen 13 a lot. And also, I liked The Authority a lot. It seems like there was a second, like, a, 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 a reboot of The Authority or something. I'm not that much of a comic book person. I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about. But The Original Authority, there was some shit in there. Like, and the reason I liked The Authority is that I thought it was really realistic. Like, a lot of times they did things I didn't agree with. <clears throat> but... I thought it was really well written. Another really well written, which is not superhero at all, is was a comic book called Lucifer, which was about Lucifer, the fallen angel. And it was really badass. I need to dig those out and reread those. And I also want to plug 2001 Nights. Nights as in night, day and night, not night as in King Arthur Nights. 2001 Nights, a science fiction series. I think it was only 10 comics long, but it was really, really good. Hunt that down and find it if you can. Anyhow, Batman is the fucking James T. Kirk of superheroes. Because you've got all these superheroes and they've got superpowers. This is the thing always about Superman. And Superman can be good if it's, if it's well done. I read this Superman comic I can't remember what it was. I mean, I can't remember the name of it, but I just remember that and it was a book. It was like a graphic novel. They did Superman really well because they showed, you know, because Superman has these essentially just this unlimited power. 
And the comic book did a really good job of showing how just because you have unlimited powers doesn't mean you can change everything. I wish I could remember more to explain it better than that because I just sound like a fucking retard. And I wish I could remember the name of it to recommend you read it, but I can't. And if I ever figure it out, I'll let you know. I got it from the library. Maybe I'll try looking through my library records or something. But yeah, the point is, let me, let me get to the point. None of this has anything to do with what I was going to talk about when I started recording this. Batman, unlike the other superheroes, like Spider-Man is pretty cool. And Green Lantern, I've always been a fan of Green Lantern. I think Green, Green Lantern is pretty cool. I've, like I said, I've never been a Superman fan because he's too powerful. And I've always found that to be uninteresting to me because you know Superman's always going to win. I mean, how do you defeat Superman? Right? Superman has no chance of losing. He has no fucking chance of losing. Unless you've got some kryptonite, he has no chance in hell of losing. Also, another good comic I would, graphic novel I recommend you read is, I think it's called Red Sun. And it's based on the premise that Superman, instead of landing where he did in the original mythology, Superman's, when he's a baby, his spaceship crash lands in the Soviet Union. It's really good. But when you've got these superheroes that have the powers, you know, they can fly and they're involved in shit, they've got all that. But Batman, and another superhero I like a lot, not as much as Batman, but I think it's pretty cool, is Green Arrow. For the same reason, Batman and Green Arrow are normal, mortal humans. They've got no superpowers. They've got, there's nothing special about them other than their training, their devotion, their brains, their intelligence, their wits. And this is, to me, the greatness of Batman. Batman, he, he's not Superman. He doesn't have powers. He's not bulletproof. He's, he's, he's got to think. It's his brain and his body against all the bad guys. And Batman... He's in it for vengeance. His parents were killed by criminals. He's not. He doesn't have some ah justice. And I think it's watered down a lot nowadays. But the original Batman mythos, at least as I think about it, is he is a guy who says criminals are bad people, and I'm gonna put a fucking bullet in them. And to me, that's that's the Batman. He he's not this fucking liberal pussy who thinks that criminals can be saved and if you know if you just give the criminal enough fucking welfare checks and some food stamps and you talk to him about his feelings he'll stop killing and raping and stealing you know batman recognizes that there are evil people and evil people need to have a bullet put in their fucking heads Batman, and of course, the, the greatest Batman graphic novel I have read is, of course, The Dark Knight Returns, in which he confronts Superman and has to take Superman down. And so when you're confronting a Superman and you're only a normal mortal, right? Obviously, just blow to blow, fist to fist, punch to punch, Batman can't beat Superman. Not a fucking chance in hell. The only way Batman can win is with his brains. He's got to outthink Superman. He's got a plan for every contingency. He's got to be not one step ahead, not two steps ahead, not three steps ahead. He's got to be 17, 18, 24, 63 steps ahead. And my friends, as anarcho-capitalist, the state is Superman. We cannot defeat the state blow for blow, punch for punch, fist for fist. We have to be like Batman. 
We have to be smarter. We have to think ahead. We have to plan. We have to bide our time. We have to stack the deck. And then, then, when the one right moment occurs, we must strike the killing blow with no hesitation at all. We can't feel sorry for Superman as he dies. That has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. Here's what I wanted to talk about when I started this anarchy moment and this giant fucking dose of CLSology. Speaking of dying, I spoke a little bit ago in a Stating the Obvious episode. I talked about... Wait, what's this? I'm getting distracted by YouTube. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. It's more Superman. Six things you... Okay, I'll come back to that. I spoke about the director of the movie Gray State Committing Suicide. And in one of the Stating the Obvious episodes, I said, oh, I was going to say something brilliant about that, and then I forgot what the fuck I was going to say. I remembered what I was going to say about this. Here's the thing. Whenever you see something about someone who is an anarcho-capitalist committing suicide, I think it's always bullshit. I think it's 100% always bullshit, and here's why. We as anarcho-capitalists. Well, okay, first of all, let me start here. Why do people commit suicide? People, and again, I've never committed suicide, all right? I have any first-hand knowledge here. A lot of people wish I would commit suicide, mostly femistatist, but, you know, fuck you and your cunt ass. Why do people commit suicide? My theory, my thesis is that people commit suicide because they feel like they have, in some way or another, lost control of their life, things have spiraled away from them, they're in a downward descent that they can't prevent. Something along those lines, right? People who believe things are getting better, I don't, I, again, I, like I said, I mean, I'm serious about this. I have never committed suicide. I don't, so it, it's hard for me to understand this perspective. And I've never seriously contemplated suicide because even though I've had times where I've been pissed off or depressed or angry or felt like things were going out of control or felt like the, the deck was stacked against me, so to speak, I've never gotten to the point where I would actually sit and go, oh, I should just kill myself. I mean, I'm not saying I've never loosely thought about that. I mean, you know, again, it's like, if, if, is there anyone out there who can say they've never in their life for even half a second thought of seriously thought I should just kill myself? I think all of us have. The point is it comes in our brains and we say, oh, I should kill myself. It's like, no, I should fuck that. I'm not going to fucking kill myself. Screw that. You're right. And we let go of it. So I think in order for somebody to seriously contemplate suicide, you have to be in a place where you really feel like you really truly must believe that there is no, this sounds kind of corny, brighter future for you or something, right? You must feel like, you must believe, you must truly think that things are going to continue to get worse for you and that your life is not worth living. And again, I mean, it's it's hard for me to fathom that because I don't think I've ever been there. And also, this is not in any way to, to say that people who are in that emotional state, right, I'm, I'm not, I'm, how do I articulate myself here? 
I'm not trying to put people down or make fun of those people. I can understand how people would get into an emotional state where they think, fuck, man, my life sucks so goddamn bad I should put a bullet into my head, right? I'm not trying to invalidate that at all. I can understand people would get to that point. I'm saying I've never been there, and I think that for a person to kill themselves, you must be at that point where you think that things suck so fucking bad that it's actually better to be dead. And I honestly believe that's a terrible thing for somebody to be at that point. And I don't want anybody, anyone, even the most fucking le all right, that's a lie. Actually, I do want left-wing statists and right-wing statists to fucking kill themselves. I was about to lie to you. Here's the thing. I don't think anyone, because as anarcho-capitalist, the person who is directing gray state understood to a strong degree what's going on in this country. He understood the coming oppression. He understood the coming police state. He understood the concept of the state. And we, oh God, here's another YouTube video I have to watch. Five ways Batman could beat Superman without kryptonite. I have to watch that. All right. Anyway, <laughs> God, I'm just... And also, if you haven't searched for it and find it, it's in a book. It's called, it's an essay. I forgot who wrote it. It's called Man of Steel, Woman of Tissue. And it's about if Superman were real. For example, it talks about how if Superman were real and he had sex with Lois Lane, well, obviously his sperm, when he ejaculated, his sperm would come busting out at super strength and rip right through her body. Anyway, it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, which is suicide. I have a hard time believing anyone, Batman versus Captain America, Batman would whoop the, I'm looking at YouTube again, Batman would whip the living shit out of Captain America. Captain America has a goddamn shield. Dude, are you? That's not even a competition, dude. Batman versus Captain America is like Hulk Hogan in his prime versus a fucking three two d did a three day old baby. Okay, not even close. Batman would beat the shit out of Captain America. Anyway, I have to stop looking at YouTube. <laughs> okay, look. We as anarcho capitalists recognize what's going on. I've talked about this before. We as anarcho-capitalists recognize that we have been wrong more than anyone else alive. Because all of us who are anarcho-capitalists, before being ANCAPs, we were statist. To some degree or another, all of us grew up believing in some degree of statism. I find it hard to believe. I could be wrong. There could be two or three people out there who were actually raised by anarcho-capitalist parents and have never encountered statist indoctrination. It's possible. I just don't think it's very plausible. All of us who are anarcho-caps have been statist in the past. We have rejected all of these beliefs, we have moved beyond. This is what I've talked about. We as anarcho-capitalists have been wrong more than anybody else on the planet. We have all been wrong more than anyone else. And that's why we are anarcho-capitalists, because we are superior to the statist. We have the ability to recognize our statist beliefs were incorrect, that they were wrong, that they are in fact evil. That they, that statist beliefs, our statist beliefs resulted in the imprisonment, the slavery, and the death of other human beings. We recognized that we were fucked up pieces of shit and we rejected those beliefs and moved forward. We have been wrong more than anyone else on the planet Earth, and that is why we are more right than anybody else on the planet Earth.
And as such, we have had to confront the fact that we are wrong. We can be wrong. We are fallible. We make mistakes. And confronting those things makes us not just intellectually better, not just superior, and I mean that in every sense, superior. I've talked about this a gazillion times. You're sick of hearing me say it. We are superior to statists. We are a different species from them. We are superior to them. They are garbage. We are the future. Right? I've talked about this before when I talk about the X-Men movie where I talked about how I was watching this movie and I couldn't figure out why people thought Magneto was the bad guy. Magneto, he's looking at this. He's going, we are the mutants. We are the future. We are superior. The government wants to kill us. The government wants to register us. The government wants to put us in camps. We should kill the government. We should kill the mundanes because we are superior. And I'm like, yes, of course you should. This is, exa- I, this is us. We are the end caps. We are the superior. The statists are the mundanes. We are better than them. And this is, again, I've talked about this. This is why I have no fucking love. I cannot fucking stand people who claim to be ANCAPs, but talk about how if we're just nice to the statists, if we just explain to them. No, you cannot fucking explain to them. They are inferior. The only, there's, there's only one in the end In the end, only one of two things can happen. The statist will exterminate us or we will exterminate them. These are things I need to talk about in the future when I talk about seasteading and everything, yada, yada, yada. Okay, But ultimately, down the line, statism and anarcho-capitalism cannot survive in the same world together. One must eliminate the other. Odds are the statists are going to kill us. They're already starting to kill us as evidenced by the fact that, and I have no evidence of this. I have no proof. I'm just telling you, the guy who was directing the movie, Gray State, did not fucking kill himself and his family. He was exterminated by the government. And this is what I'm trying to get around to if I ever get to it. Okay, we as anarcho-capitalists, we recognize the reality around us. We recognize that we are slaves. We recognize that everyone around us is slaves. We recognize the state for what it is, okay? Once you've accepted that, you, you, no anarcho-capitalist is going to kill themselves, And it's like if you've ever seen the movie Southland Tales, if you haven't seen Southland Tales, watch it. It's a brilliant movie. It's fantastic. It's done by the same guy who did Donnie Darko, which I thought was okay. And like the last, I don't know, 15 minutes or so of Southland Tales, I think is one of the most fantastic movie crescendos I've ever seen. There's all of this building and Moby is a left-wing fucking piece of shit. But his music, I like his music a lot. Moby does the music for this movie. And like the fifth, last 15 or so minutes of this movie, it's just this build. And I think it's just brilliantly orchestrated. And I think it could have been twice as long as I, and I still would have been happy. And it, it's just, it's a fantastic movie. But in there, The Rock... Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. The Rock says this. If you smell la 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 la, but The Rock is cooking. The Rock says, pimps don't commit suicide. We, anarcho capitalist, we are pimps. We, more than anyone else on the planet Earth, we recognize the truth. We are pimps. We are OG. And my friends, pimps do not commit suicide. Anarcho capitalists do not commit suicide. They don't. Because we recognize the truth of what's going on. We see behind the curtain. We understand. We seek to escape the state. We seek to circumvent the state. We seek to butt fake, but, uh, butt fuck 
the state. We seek to bring down the state. We seek freedom. We seek liberty. We seek truth. But we, anarcho-capitalist, we do not commit suicide. Because suicide is the resort of someone who has lost hope. And once you become an anarcho-capitalist, the last fucking thing you do, the last fucking thing you do, listen to me, you cocksucking motherfuckers out there, the last fucking thing you do as an anarcho-capitalist is give up. That's the last fucking thing we do. If there is any group of people on this planet that fucking fight to the end, it's us. We've got the fucking filthy fucking femistatist cunts trying to shut us up. We've got the fucking liberal Democrats trying to shut us up. We got the conservative Republicans trying to shut us up. We got the HR departments trying to shut us up. We got the fucking censorship of motherfucking feminist book trying to shut us up. Everybody on the fucking planet is trying to shut us up. And yet here we are. Anarcho capitalists do not quit. We do not fucking put bullets on our own brains. It's bullshit. It is bull fucking shit. We are pimps. And pimps do not commit suicide.